Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province of play. Are you ready to get creative with us this week? Let's review our three basic rules that guide us through our exploration and play. Rule one is respect. We want to respect ourselves, anyone we're making with, our tools and making space, and the lands and waterways where we're making. How can you practice respect when you explore, play, and make? Rule two is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful, creative explorations are great, regardless of what it ends up looking like. Try to do things you've never tried before and ask yourself, what will happen if I... Rule number three is nothing is for keeps. Everything we make together is a test or a draft or creative playtime. We're just trying things out. What can you make or try today and then take apart or recycle? What can we learn by making and not keeping? These are our three rules for when we explore together every week. Okay, what will we explore together this week? Hi, I'm Paige Smith and I'm a visual artist and filmmaker. I live and work in Vancouver, British Columbia, which is on the unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh peoples. I'm currently the artist in resident with Art Starts and they've asked me as part of my residency to make a explorers workshop with you. An artist residency just means I'm an artist and Art Starts has given residence to me kind of like giving me space and a home to make my art. So I'm really excited that I had this opportunity and I'm really excited to get to work with all of you today and learn a little bit more about art. So today's workshop is going to be a little different than maybe if you've seen Art Starts videos before, what they look like. Because like I said, I'm a visual artist and filmmaker. I make a lot of art with lenses and cameras. So I thought it might be nice to film this workshop a little differently than is usually filmed because I'm a filmmaker and I thought that'd be fun. So today's workshop is going to be under the theme of landscapes. If you've been watching previous videos from Explorers this month, you'll know that this is the theme of the month. So I'm going to be approaching that theme as well, but from my own unique perspective. So I thought the first thing we should go over is what supplies you need to participate in this workshop and what this workshop is going to be about. So the supplies you need is drawing utensils. So I have a Sharpie, but you could have a pencil, you could have a colored marker, whatever works for you, whatever you have on hand. Could be a crayon, could be a pencil crayon, could be a felt tipped marker, whatever works. And then you need something to write slash draw on. So in my case, I have a notebook and it just has like, some blank pages in it so it has space for me to work. But you could do it on anything. You could also have some like scrap paper. I just have like an old envelope, um, some like old paper from a bag, paper that was gonna be recycled, I could use the back of, and sticky notes, you know, whatever you have on hand, just something to put those marks on. And then another part of supplies today, because this workshop is going to be a little different than usual, is getting permission. So today we're not gonna be working in the same space that most Art Starts Explorers workshops are. We're gonna be up on our feet and we're gonna be going somewhere. So instead of working at your usual maybe desk or table or whatever space you usually make your art at, we're gonna be out in a landscape. Now that landscape could be a lot of different places depending on what permission you're, what you're allowed to do and what permissions you're given, but you need to make sure you ask for permission before you go to that place. Today we're gonna be working in a landscape 
And that landscape could be a lot of places. That could be your living room or your home. It could be your bedroom. It could be your backyard, your front yard, the space outside your apartment building. It could be the street you live on. It could even be your neighborhood. But wherever you're going, you need to ask permission and make sure you're safe. So asking someone like a parent, a guardian, a teacher, whoever is the right adult to ask in this moment, based on where you're at, you need to ask them if it's okay for you to go to this place. So today we're going to be, today's workshop involves walking around a landscape and then drawing that landscape. So it's important that it's okay for you and safe for you to go and walk there. So that might be mean that you work inside today and that's totally going to be great and fine. Um, That might mean you stay within your yard or the front of your apartment building. And maybe you get permission to walk along the street that you live on or to walk around your neighborhood. (laughs) Whatever permission you're given will make work and will make it so that you can still participate in this workshop. And And you can participate in this workshop with an adult or an older child if you're given permission as well. So if you want to walk around your neighborhood, maybe you try and set a time aside and ask an adult to do this exercise with you. Um, It just depends on what permission you're given. So I just want to reiterate, it's really important to be safe and to make sure you're allowed to go where you want to go. So to get to the topic of today's workshop, we're going to be thinking about the question, what is a landscape? And then specifically, how do you participate in a landscape? So participate means to be part of something or to act with something. So, you know, you might think of you participate in sports, you're part of the sports team, or you participate in Um, band, you're part of playing music, or you participate in, you know, a family activity, something like that. Those are all actions of participation. We're going to try and think about it in this creative way. How do we participate in a landscape? That's kind of a weird question, right? So maybe you've thought about this already in the sense of what is a landscape, but maybe you haven't. So Let's think about that first. What is a landscape? I think of a landscape as a space that you can see. So it's a pretty broad definition. So a landscape could be you're seated seated in your living room right now and you look around and what you're seeing is the landscape of your living room. Landscape could also be something like you look out your window and the space you see outside your window is a landscape. So Once you've selected your landscape and you've gotten permission to go there, and again, that landscape can be anywhere. It can be your home, your living room, your bedroom, your kitchen. It could be your backyard, the outside of your apartment building, the street you live on. It could be the field of your school. It could be your classroom. It could be your neighborhood. It could be anything like that. It could be a park that you're in. Um, I've started my journey of finding a landscape and going for my walk. And my landscape is going to be my neighborhood. So I'm just gonna walk around the few blocks around my home. So in my case, I live in the West End on unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh peoples. If you don't know where the West End is, it's uh, part of downtown Vancouver. It's uh, close to Stanley Park, if you know where Stanley Park is. Um, So, yes, I live in the West End, so my neighborhood um, is going to be my landscape today. So then, now we're going to combine that idea of participating and landscape. So how do we participate in a landscape? It's kind of a funny question. How do you act with or do something with something like a landscape? So we're going to try and answer that question today and think about how we are also part of the landscape. So today we're gonna go on a journey and we're gonna go to that landscape and we're gonna walk. And as we're walking, we're gonna draw what we notice. 
So you're going to grab your supplies so that you're ready. Bring your notebook, bring your little writing utensil. And then we're going to walk. And the first thing we're going to do is we're not going to walk. We're going to remember to not walk to a destination. So usually when we're walking somewhere, we have somewhere we're trying to get to. So maybe if you're outside, you're walking to somewhere like school or a bus stop or a friend's house. Or if you're inside, you're walking to go get food from the kitchen or you're walking to grab your toy or a book or something. It's not very common that we walk just to walk. Maybe you do that. Maybe you go for walks with your friends or your family sometimes and you're just walking to walk. Maybe you do that during recess. I know I used to. I used to walk around the field of my school. So we're going to try and walk more like that. More we're just walking just to walk. We're not trying to get anywhere specifically. And then step two is we have to notice. We have to notice the landscape. So as you're walking, notice what you see, what you hear, what you smell. Do you see trees, people, buildings? Do you hear maybe a dog barking? Do you hear people talking? Do you hear an airplane above you? Do you hear the ocean, cars, a school bell? Do you smell maybe the trees? Maybe there's not a distinct smell? Stuff like that. So just try and keep those noticing goggles on. So when I first left my home, um, I live on a somewhat quiet street for the West End and even on a quiet street it's pretty loud here because we're downtown. So I hear the birds, the cars, the bikes, the people. I live right beside a school so I hear a lot of kids and families. Um, we live pretty close to a bigger street so you hear even more cars that way. And as we're walking and noticing what you're trying to do is you're going to try and notice also how you feel, how you feel in your body. And this is that participation part. What you're trying to notice is how the landscape, all the things you're seeing and uh, list, uh, all the things you're seeing and hearing and maybe smelling, how those are making you feel is the sound of the ocean making you happy. Is the sound of the school bell ringing making you excited? Or maybe the school bell makes you, oh, I don't want to go to school kind of feeling. Maybe you see buildings and they're buildings of places you've been. Maybe that's exciting. Maybe they're buildings and you don't know what's in them. So they're curious. Maybe you are seeing trees and you want to go explore the trees. Maybe you're noticing cars and you want to avoid them because you want to stay safe. Um, if you're inside, maybe you're noticing the sun coming through your window or maybe you're noticing the pillows on your couch. And how does that make you feel? Maybe it feels nice to be in the warmth of the sunlight. Maybe it feels nice to touch and cuddle the pillows. Maybe you are hearing someone else in the home and maybe you're curious what that sound is or maybe the sound's kind of annoying and you wish it wasn't happening. It just depends. So where you are and what you're noticing. So again, notice and think about how you feel. And as you're walking and moving, what you can try and do is then let that feeling guide you because again we don't have a destination in mind so we're just trying to walk for walks we're just trying to walk to walk with no destination no place we're trying to go to in mind so instead of having a place we're trying to go we're just trying to make our bodies feel good so notice the landscape and walk where it feels good to walk walk where there's curious things to see, where it feels good, what makes you happy. 
Try and let the landscape guide you in that way. Follow your instincts. Follow your gut. Follow what feels right to do. And of course, while staying safe and of course, while still respecting the place you are, don't want to hurt yourself or anyone or the land you're on. So just try and focus on what feels good and what feels right. So as you're walking, you can either walk and follow your instincts and keep going until you maybe find somewhere that feels good. And then from there, we'll do our drawings. Yeah, but the first thing I noticed was the birds, because for some reason, there's still so many of them, even though when you're downtown and they're chirping and tweeting and they're kind of what's interesting, interesting to me today. So I think I'm going to follow that instinct um, and we're going to listen for the birds and look for the birds homes, maybe in the trees. So I'm continuing my journey and my walk just to walk, and I'm really trying to notice how the landscape guides me. So in this case, I'm on a street with a sidewalk. So my instinct is kind of to stay on the sidewalk. You know, that's what we're taught. Stay on the sidewalk, that's where it's safe. And that feels good. So I'm just gonna keep walking on the sidewalk. So let's go. <laughs> so as I'm walking on the sidewalk, I just noticed this really cute sticky note. Trust your gut. That seems perfect for our little project today. So let's keep trusting our guts. Okay, so I'm still following my instincts, still hearing the birds, still noticing all the trees. No, no, you're good, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm still noticing all the birds in the trees and all my neighbors and my neighborhood. Um, and my instinct was to go this way because there's this really unique tree that I don't know if you've heard of it before, the monkey tree is the nickname and they're not super common so I wanted to come this way and also this is the way to like my favorite little coffee store uh coffee shop in the west end and and you can think about questions like what is attracting you why you know what things are interesting to you what makes you want to go in a certain direction and you can think about that and think about why why does that attract me is it because it's interesting and new and curious Maybe it's because it is familiar and you know that that makes you happy. Maybe it's because it looks a certain way and that makes you happy. Maybe it's because you have memories of that place and that makes you happy. Whatever it is, you can try and notice that as well. So this is my favorite coffee shop and I'm drawn here because it's a really familiar location for me. The people that work there know me and my partner. And it's really close to my home. So, you know, if I need a break during the day, I can come here. It's nice and cozy. And I really like it here because they have a little awning. So if the weather's not nice, you can still be protected from the rain. And you can stay outside and drink your coffee. So thinking about the birds more, I couldn't see any of the ones I was hearing. I guess they were all up in the trees. So I wanted to go somewhere where I knew there would be birds. Uh, which are the Canadian geese that are always here by the beach. So yeah, these little guys seem to be eating or something and they're always here. I don't know why. They love it here. I think it's their home. Oh, and it looks like there's some crows too. Yeah, lots of birds like to come out to the ocean and lots of people and animals in general. This is like a really great area for me. I love coming here in general too, because even though it's still loud um, with the city, you feel a little closer to nature because I don't know, there's the sand and the water, but yeah. So let's explore this landscape. I think this will be what we stick with today. Okay, so now we're at English Bay proper and you can see the horizon, the sand, the boats. Um, I think my instincts brought me here because I've been thinking about English Bay a lot and the boats here and because it's one of my favorite places in the West End. I think I instinctively want to get off the loud streets and the big streets and I want to go where it's a bit quieter. 
And that's really hard to find in downtown Vancouver because there's so many people. So this is kind of the best you can get, even though it's still quite loud, still quite a lot of people. Um, you know, right behind you is the seawall and I'm just seeing people walk back and forth. So, so it's still like you're downtown, but it feels like you're in a little sliver of nature. Okay, so now we're going to get into the drawing part of the exercise. So you're going to find your landscape. Maybe you've done your walk, you found somewhere that this, you felt the landscape guided you to. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and look at the landscape and see what we notice. Now you could draw, you know, exactly what you see. So in my case, I see the horizon and this is the ocean here. So maybe some waves and I see some boats on the water. And I see the mountains in the background. And I see some trees over here and some rocks here. So you can draw a landscape like that, like a full picture. Or you could just choose to draw certain elements, kind of like taking them out of the landscape. So maybe we want to focus just on the boats. So I'm just going to draw the boat I see. So these boats are called vessels and they contain on them these little shipping containers. Well, actually little isn't the right word. They're quite big. Maybe you've seen them before. They're like these rectangle shapes and there's lots of them. They're all stacked up on the boat and they come from far away places and they have lots of things in them. So here's my little rendition, my little drawing of what I feel like the boat looks like. So this, this is the first thing I notice in my landscape is these boats. And there's lots of them. So yeah, so the boat is something I notice. I also notice all the stuff on the beach around me. So there's like these weird twig things. They look like they're kind of like hay or something. I don't know how they got here. There's also people on the beach. Walking towards the ocean. There's some trees if I look to my left and my right. So while I'm looking around, you should do the same. Look at your landscape. What do you notice? What do you see? What kind of structures are there? What kind of items? What kind of materials and textures? You know, are you in your backyard? What does the ground look like? What does the sky look like? You know, I'm on the beach, so my ground looks like sand. So maybe I could represent it like this. My sky is pretty overcast, so it's pretty like blob like I don't, something like that maybe. But maybe you're outside today and it's really sunny. What do the clouds look like? Are there any clouds? What kind of buildings are near you? What kind of nature is near you? Are there humans? Are there animals? You know, I can't see them right in front of me now, but there was those little Canadian geese earlier. Ooh, I can't look at them right now, so I'm drawing from memory, but I thought they looked something kind of like this. 
Um, so yeah, you're just kind of trying to make an impression of your, of your landscape and what stands out to you. What, what, uh, what attracts you? Those same skills we were using while we were walking. Trust your instincts. Where do your eyes go? Where do your ears go? What do you smell? What do you feel? You know, I hear the ocean. Maybe I should draw some waves to represent the ocean coming up on the beach. I hear the birds calling. Things like that. Okay, so this is one way to try and draw the landscape. We could also approach it in a different way. We could think about our walk and our journey. So maybe while you're walking, you could draw what I would call a little foot map. So maybe you could be like, I started here and here could be anywhere. In my case, it was my home. And, you know, I went up this street, then I went this way, then we went up and back, then we went down another street, then we went this way, then we crossed. You know, but maybe for you, it was something smaller. Maybe you were just in your backyard and you said, I started here and I went here, here, and I, I just went in a circle and I found that felt really good. You know, you can make this really any way you want. You know, you can make it look like a map, but you could also, you know, this, at least this reminds me of a map because, you know, X is our starting point and maybe this X is our ending point and we're kind of looking at it from a bird's eye view, in my brain at least. But, you know, you could try and express how it felt, you know? We started off quiet and we followed the little birdies. Maybe the little birdies went like this. They made us go loud. And then we followed them, but we went to a loud street and it was too loud and it stressed me out. So then I said, no, we're going to the beach. And then we went to where the waves were. So for me, that's kind of like a foot map, but focused on sound and how the sound made me feel. So again, it's like the start and the end of my little journey, at least. And with that idea of how you feel, you can also try and draw how the landscape makes you feel. So that can look like anything. It doesn't have to look like an object or a thing. It can be really expressive, you know, maybe when you're drawing, you try and move your hand and your arm the way that you feel. So right now I feel, you know, pretty relaxed. So I feel kind of like this. My hand feels really loose and that's kind of how my body feels. But, you know, when I was on that loud street, I kind of felt more like, ooh, oh. Too much, too much, too much. So you can see this one's kind of more curvy. This one's more jiggy. Now we're going to, now that we've done the noticing, we've thought about what stands out in the landscape. We've thought about how we got here, how we can represent how we've gotten here, how the landscape makes us feel you know, the beach versus the busy street. Now we're going to use our imaginations and wonder how could we make this landscape even better? How could we make it feel even better on the inside? So I'm gonna use colored markers to do this part. And um, these are just what I had in my home. They're little highlighters. So maybe we'll use blue. And we're gonna use our imagination and think about what would we add to this landscape to make it even better? What would I add? Hmm. Hmm. I already really like this landscape. I would definitely add some dogs. I love dogs. They are my favorite little animals. This is my little drawing of a dog. So I would definitely add some dogs with his little tongue. <laughs> Does that look like a dog? <laughs> and I would add lots of them because I love dogs. So maybe a dog with pointy ears. Oh, this one looks like a cat. Maybe there was a cat at the beach too. <laughs> so 
stripes. What else would I add? Well, I'm kind of missing the sun, so I would add a sun to my beach. Something like that. Make these gray skies a little nicer. I would add more trees, because I love the trees. Maybe the trees would have leaves on them, because it's winter right now, so all the trees are out of leaves. So I want a full big tree with leaves, lots of them. Is there anything else I would want to add? Maybe a, maybe a stereo so I could listen to some of my favorite music. I'm kind of drawing like a old school stereo. With the little antennas. I don't know if you've ever seen that kind of stereo, but they have little antennas and there's music coming out of it. Yeah, that would make me happy if the landscape looks more like that. So this is just how I would do it, but you can do this anyway. You know, you can, you could keep this a little more tidy, you know, you could use more than one page, but this is just my idea of how I would do it. So then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to try now what would we remove from the landscape? What would make the landscape feel better? You know, thinking about you have complete control. You could do anything you want. What would you do? So in my case, the thing that stands out to me the most that I don't like is the shipping containers because they kind of feel like, you know, they're clogging up the horizon. And to me, you know, they don't look very nice. They don't make me happy. So one option is you could take a spare piece of paper, like a sticky note or something like that, and you could just cover them up. You could say, no, no shipping containers in my landscape. So I'm just kind of using a sticky note to do that for mine. But you could use any kind of paper. Or if you didn't want to use sticky notes or you don't have any other paper, you could, you know, rip your original paper and kind of rip out the part you don't like. So I don't want there to be a shipping container there. And this next part, I don't want this one either. But yeah, don't need to be tidy, it's all about the process. So those are kind of two options, you know, and if you do the paper covering one, you could draw on this what you would want to see. So maybe instead of shipping containers, I would want to see like, I don't know, I just had this idea like a big whale. What if out in the water, we could see like a big whale? <laughs> Does that look like a whale? <laughs> or maybe he's a big tuna fish. <laughs> So yeah, that's kind of the exercise for today. Um, I hope I've explained it okay. Again, this is new to me, so I'm trying my best and I'm sure we're just doing this together and we're both new, so that's okay. By the end, we're gonna have thought about how we participate in those landscapes, but also this other idea of how the landscape kind of participates with us you know, how does the landscape affect how we feel and how does it affect where we go and what we do in our landscape?